tell you. Bro. Hey, hey, good morning, guys. Welcome back to New Mexico. Hopefully, you guys are uh, caught up with the series and you've watched the two videos I've uploaded already. My buddy Joel shot a bull, Mike shot a bull, and now it's my turn. We're uh, dedicating the last two days to an overnight backpack trip. So we got Joel in front of me, we got Dreo breaking trail. We're headed into some back country to try to find this big bull that Joel spotted. So we got two days to get it done. We got our sleeping gear and everything to do an overnighter. So we got a dang good push. We're starting out at like uh, 3.45 a.m. And I think our odds of finding a good bull is pretty good. So stick with us, guys. It's gonna be a good hunt. Well, daylight's breaking and we're still breaking trail. Trying to get some elevation to see some of this stuff. We got a long ways to go before we get to the really good stuff, so we're gonna kind of cruise glass as we go. Still have a chance to see a bull in these little openings, but our best chance is probably straight up to the very, very top. So we're just gonna slowly push and just hunt the morning. But we break through the trails every now and then. You can see some hillsides like that. So we'll take advantage of everything we can. Oh, it's getting daylight, I'm super antsy. But man, it's windy. Kind of a bummer, the elk. The elk don't like the wind, so they might have to be off the back sides of these to get out of the wind, but we're dropping all our gear for camp right here and just gonna keep pushing up, up there. And uh, we got some major winds blowing up on the backbone we were on, so we actually peeled off this side to get out of the wind. And now we're on the side of the mountain where I killed my bull two years ago, which I'm looking at it right now, and it's just a crap hole. <laughs> we're trying to hunt the elk on the other side, but man, this fog and the wind is just ripping. The sun is trying to burn through some of this, so we're gonna build a fire using the uh, hush pyro putty fire starter get this little fire going to keep us warm the morning was kind of shot because of the wind but man we saw two freaking stud mule deer bucks i was tempted to get my stuff out to film them but between the wind and the cold i was like man nah. i always tell you guys i keep this in my backpack um i i use a smaller one for my backpack and it honestly doesn't take a whole lot to get a fire started but you just want to rip off a piece of the pyro putty like that. Everything up here is kind of wet and frozen, so it might take a little more than normal, but I'm gonna give it a good light. Barely got it. I think my lighter's not doing too hot. Really need some dry pine needles or something. Let's go. I didn't build the best, uh, best uh, teepee or the best cabin, but I think we got it if we keep feeding it. So yeah, guys. I mean, we were not expecting it to be this cold. And when we started our hike, we're like, oh, it's such a nice day. Get some fire starter. If it's not hush, go get some somewhere else and have two. I typically do have two, but I start. I did one. I'm not gonna lie, because I was trying to cut weight. So have two lighters in your backpack at, at all times, all season, anywhere you go. Fire is a game changer. Oh. Where there is fire and water, there is life. We have both. We got Dreo bombing into camp. <laughs> we knew it was going to be just a tough hunt in general with nice weather. Take the tough hunt, add in bad weather, bad conditions, bad visibility. It's going to be a really tough hunt. So all we can do is hope that this blows out and clears up. But I'd like to welcome Dreo to the camp. Fire. He's bringing his own wood. What's up, Dreo? I got. A, I built him a nice spot. What a what a friend, huh? I got him a rock crop, outcrop, so he can sit down. Oh, nice dude. What's up, bro? 
It's getting foggy again. I'd like to introduce you to the sunshine. Uh, where is it? Over here. It's been so cold hanging out by a fire and literally the sun coming through the clouds makes it 10 times warmer. Hunts like this though. These are the ones you like never forget whether you tag one or not. Hope we tag one of course. We're gonna give it heck. We're gonna give it our best shot, so just kinda really hoping these clouds like blow out for good, but there's some holes in the clouds. Look how fast they're moving. I mean it's just cruising and on this backbone up here it's just ripping. Update, it's 419 p.m. Got clear skies, it's so nice. The wind has died down a lot. It's still ripping on the backbone up there, I can tell, but it's much better than it was. So we've been posted up at our fire pit, taking naps and eating food. Yeah, just kind of chill up here, just living on the mountain. But game plan is to get high, like as high as we possibly can and glass as much country as we can, including where Joel saw the big, big bull. Leaving the comforts of the campfire up in this big giant country looking for just one bull guys just one so we'll kill a bull three for three baby everybody's uh optimistic so we're just gonna keep our hopes up work hard and turn one up well we're looking at a last light not one single elk this place is so cold and windy. I don't know if the elk are moving. Kind of a bummer day when you only have two days left and one of them gets eaten up by bad weather and wind. But it's not looking good. And then we gotta go set up a tent and decide if we're gonna sleep up here or not. I know there's elk, but it's just not moving around today. All right, here is, uh, this is where we're gonna put camp tonight. Camped up here a couple years ago with Dreo, uh, Jordan Harbertson, and Shed Crazy in Dallas. We had a killer hunt, and uh, just like that year, I'm coming down to the very last day with a tag in my pocket. So, I'm gonna get tent up. We're uh, gonna go build a fire over here in the trees, eat some dinner, and get rested. I think our fires have been the highlight of our day, <laughs> sitting by these things. Nice and warm, huh? Oh yeah, feels so good. We're cooking a couple dinners. We've got some peaked refuel meals. This one's a sweet pork and rice. I haven't tried that one, it looks good. What do you got? Chicken, chicken pesto pasta. Solid. Yeah. You cooking dinner, Dreo? No, I think those Rice and beans was good enough, yeah, huh? Rice beans good. We're gonna grub and uh, Stay warm and go to bed and we'll see you guys at first light like i said tomorrow's the last day so someone in this group's got around up a bull who will be <laughs> see you guys in the morning we uh survived the night somehow <laughs> it's so cold up here let me show you tent a little frosty yeah god i should have probably put it somewhere in the back it's it's a little frosty there Pretty thick too, so we'll get our stuff together and uh, hike to the top. And it's a lot less windy, so hopefully elk are out today. We've got four elk over here, one small bull. Um, we had him at 420 yards, but not a shooter. So to the top we go. Just gonna try to keep an eye on these things.
out in the open, open. Freaking broadside, bro. We've uh, got a shooter bull. He's actually right above our camp. I think I need to drop some elevation to get a little closer, so we're just getting some video through the scope. He looks alone, and he's got a big open face that he's feeding on, so we gotta get moving. Just a solid six point, exactly what I was holding out for. So let's go. You guys ready? Yep, you got this, Eric. Yep. Just be cool, man. Just low. Just, just low. Oh. Hit him, hit him. He's going down. Oh gosh, you got him. He's going down. It looked like you hit him shoulder, Eric. I saw him, man. I hit him for sure. Gosh. It looks like you hit him shoulder, bro. Okay. Cool. It went down right here on a bull on that ridge. And it posted up right here with the uh, filming through the scope. Shot low, got a second shot off, hit him right in the chest, and hopefully that does some damage in there. But we are not celebrating. We're gonna give him some time and then we'll go in there after him and see what's up. But Joel was filming from the back. Dreo was helping me with the sticks and really supporting my back. And I felt dang good. The good news is if he dies right there or if we kill him right there, he's right above camp and that's right where he headed down. But I don't wanna to celebrate too early, but a last day bull like that, that's not broke, beautiful six point. It's everything we're looking for. It's pretty sweet. Eric's MO, last day bulls. <sighs> Second time where it came down to the last day out here at Drail. You know what, operation. Though, on sweet the bulls. amount of work that we put in on this hunt, you deserve that bull like oh, a yeah. bolt. Oh, he does. Especially putting everybody else in there, too. Yeah, yeah, these guys. He's going to school first, you know. Yeah. 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 For sure, bro. Tough me. Yeah. 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 That's it. Dude. <laughs> That's, That's it. Let's go get your bulls. All right, guys. We're going we're gonna to give him some time, but... We're gonna have to go in after him. Watch the film a bunch of times and it's low and forward. If you watch it in slow motion, you can see it drop in. It hits his chest and it kind of blows out his left front shoulder. We're playing it safe and we're uh, putting all our minds together. Came up with a plan to give him a couple hours minimum and then drop in on the top, follow his blood trail. Obviously with the gun ready to go. One step closer guys, but man, this is elk hunting. Made it to camp and uh, that bull, I shot him right there. He went down. We're gonna try to give him some time, stay warm and break down our tents. And then I'm gonna work up that ridge, get to where I shot him and follow his blood tracks. After suffering all day yesterday and last night, it's all worth it when you get a day like this on the mountain. Last day of the rifle hunt. But yeah, we're just trying to soak up this beautiful day. Right, Joel? Yes, sir. I'm doing it every second. It's 
freaking awesome up here. Joel? We're going to get a bull. I'm ready for it. Joel's very, very, very optimistic, which I want to be. I'm just, I'm just a little reserved. I'm just, I'll celebrate when the time is right. I'm going to whip up Mountain Ops Ignite. Um, if you haven't tried any of the Mountain Ops stuff, try the lemonade. It's a signature series uh, for Hush. We gave him uh, three hours. And we're going to go up there and figure this out one way or the other. It's crazy. I can watch that shot over and over. And sometimes I'm like, dude, that had to have smoked his heart. And sometimes I'm like, might have just grazed his chest and kind of hit his off shoulder. So I'm like 50-50. same elevation right here. This tall del dead pine right here. That pole is right in elevation with that tall dead pine. A bunch of glass and everything below us. Hopefully we can turn him up and he's just dead right down here. What did I tell you, bro? <laughs> Deader than a doornail. He didn't go 80 yards. He didn't go 80 yards. Oh, I was stressing. I was stressing. You heart rocked him. <laughs> Eric. <laughs> Last day. <laughs> that was the death run. I haven't even seen blood yet. I was just falling. No. I was following track down that way. I thought he I think that's tore down. Uh, yeah. Three for three. Where will he be? Dude, where, where will a bull show up? What will he look like? And we know. Now we know. We got him, fellas. Eric. Oh, his G1's gone. He broke an eye guard. Did he have that? I don't, I don't even know. I don't either. <laughs> he made it to like right here somewhere. Something. He's down. Eric. Thanks, Dude. Dude. Thank Look at that shot. Look at that shot. That's way higher than we were thinking. You crushed. Oh, dude. My, well, yeah, when we started studying, remember Jerry, we said right in the square patch of the neck, that's where it hit him. That's it, huh? Him coming downhill like that, dude. You, for him to run that far, you had to have heart punched yeah, him. Yeah, he's heart punched for sure. Oh, the pressure's off, guys. We went three for three in five days. We keep saying this, but... Uh, that's unreal. That is On this mountain, that is unreal. That's all the pack outs and everything, but... Uh, hard work since, pays since off. Since I met Dreo, we started hunting here. We're undefeated including Drail's archery tag where he killed a giant. I'm gonna put some pictures right here. He killed a stud, one of the biggest bulls I've seen on this unit. And uh, myself, three for three, Joel, Mike, Ben, um, freaking Jordan. Jordan. Yeah, we've tagged out on Drail's everybody bull. we brought out here. So this is a special moment. When you take it down to the last day, I'll tell you what, you get a little stress, but we always say it, the last day is better than the first because you're accumulating so much knowledge. That's all it took. Congratulations, dude. Thank you, man. Thank you, guys. What a moment. Let me give you guys the close-up. First time I'm going down to take a look myself down here. So We didn't think he was broke, but we couldn't tell. So, broke here. He's got some velvet on the inside. We knew he had a very average Royals with great fronts. All the way around. Somehow in the excitement and just rushing, I did not notice this was broke. It wouldn't have changed anything. But he had a big old jumbo G1. He had all this texture underneath. It would have been cool to see what it looked like. But great mass down low. After that, it's kind of average. But yeah, I was thinking 330 at first. But I'm going to have to take that back. He's not 
he's not quite there. It doesn't matter though. This is I wanted that nice mature five or just a nice six and we got it. What a moment man. What a relief. What a relief. This is so cool man. Thank you bull. We have a tradition we do every year that Dreo's kinda brought on to me and my some of my hunting crew. It's called one one last meal. To show respect to the animal. Dre will get some grass. We'll take a grass like this. We'll put it in his mouth, show him respect. That's what he calls one last meal, buddy. Tuck it up in his cheek. Thank you. Freaking stud, man. I just hit a tuna salad. No, it was chicken salad. No. Chicken salad. Joel's pounding some what? Tuna and ribs. Garlic and herb? Yep. Yep. Guys, we got this bull down right here and uh, had to pull out the camera and just share some of my thoughts. This is pretty special. Kind of crazy to think that somehow all of this and the fun stuff and the cool videos we make has allowed me and everyone at Hush to make a living because of you guys. It's really cool because I've known Joel for years now. We connected on Instagram, full-time construction and making content and merch and last year, you made the decision to go full-time? Yep. August 31st of last year would be one year full-time. Like I said, it supports everyone at Hush, and uh, I've been able to make cool friendships like Shed Crazy, Harbison Brothers uh, over at Mountain Ops, and to see Joel go full-time and put in the work and the effort and the sweat equity, it's pretty special. Appreciate it, man. So, man, if there's a... Uh, been able to share this mountain with some of my best friends, so... You know what it was, too, was when... You remember when I came out for Total Archery Challenge that year and you and I went up and stashed some water for deer camp? Yep. We are all sitting there, we were eating some protein bars or whatever, just Eric and I sitting on the mountain and we're like, just talking and Eric's like, so where are you at? Like, <laughs> figured it out, you know? And I went home, I don't know, a couple days later or whatever and put together like, just to see if I could financially do it. And uh, when I realized that like it was gonna be a risk, but I was able to do it, Man, when I took that leap and just did it, it's been unreal. Like, oh man, it gives you chills, huh? <laughs> the reason why I pulled this camera out is to say thank you to you guys and make this stuff possible. Pretty special. And I hope that these videos, whether they're coming from me, Casey, BMAC, uh, Logan, Matt, like it doesn't matter. I hope you guys enjoy them. Hope you guys find inspiration through them or some type of entertainment or learn something here and there, pick up on a a little tip but I just want to say man from the bottom of my heart thank you to all the viewers it doesn't matter what platform you watch us on whether it's on YouTube or Instagram Facebook TikTok, it doesn't matter if you guys watch the series I told you New Mexico has an e tag but this time I got a paper tag comes with an antler tag and a carcass tag so I'm gonna notch this puppy out last day of the season 20th and then uh, yeah we're gonna cut him so moment of truth Let's see, this is the antler tag. We're gonna we're gonna antler tag him, then once we skin him, I'll put the carcass tag on the hind quarter with proof of sex. Put those together. That is a tag bull. Tagged out. Tagged out. Weatherby did the job. Once again, on a beautiful bull, man. I've been pretty lucky when it comes to elk hunts. I don't know why I love elk. I like honey elk more than deer, myself. I love every hunt I get out on, but there's something, something about me and elk. Just the antlers, body size, they're so big. Hind quarter, back strap, tenderloin. Dreo just got that out so clean. Dreo showed me a really cool way to take the front shoulder off where I actually peel off a lot more meat than I used to. And I think I can get a little better at it. Probably get this on too. And you actually pull off a lot of the rib meat. We got a nice snow patch to cool it down, so this is perfect. That's the bullet right there. Just found it skinning this shoulder up. Got the bullet in the offside Dude, shoulder. Higher than I would have expected. It stopped, look at that, it mushroom crowned right <laughs> on the, it stopped it right there. Like pretty high on the offside shoulder i can't believe that dude that's like optimal no kidding my hush edition 300 weatherby you guys can order one on their website but look Gosh. at that 
Let me show you this bull now that we got him caped. His teeth were gnarly. God, I don't know if we filmed it with the vlog cam, but he's got this giant tooth that was actually cutting into his lower jaw. I've got some pictures I'll put up. This thing is gnarly, way older than I would have guessed, judging off his teeth, but there he is. Everything I could have asked for, man. Pretty six point. Got that really typical frame. Yeah, you know what else you, know, you notice on old bulls is velvet on their antlers. He's cool. <laughs> Super stoked. The front, hind, and the head. Head's a little wobbly. It's hard to get really tight. Joel's got a hind and a goodie bag. Yeah. Right? Andreo's got the goodie bag and the front. Sometimes, surprisingly, it's the trim and all the extras that's boneless. That's the most awkward to pack. <laughs> we're just trying to get get this stuff down to camp, but we're about ready. Joel's ready. <laughs> Halfway down, guys. Got these guys freaking packing some weight, too. No joke. Mature elk with three guys on trip. These are the kind of guys you need, need to be hunting with. Good hunting buddies are hard to find, so keep the ones you got. Oh. All right. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, I can't thank these guys enough, especially Dreo. Over the years, him and him and I having some good times elk hunting and also shed hunting together. Thank you, Dreo. You are welcome. You see, you got it, man. Dude, these hunts that you just kick yourself in the butt for some reason are just that much more rewarding. Came out here with Jordan and Ben and we had a heck of a hunt two years ago. And the film was for movie night and COVID hit and we hardly got to share it. The movie's called Full Send. It's like 30 minutes of this kind of stuff. Action packed, rifle elk hunting, three bulls, five days, just like this year. And it's such a bummer because we haven't shared the film. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna beg Mountain Ops and Jordan for that footage. But this is what we called the meat tree. And we hung all our meat off two bulls right here. And it's just perfect because it's shaded. We got some snow. But yeah, I don't know if, unless you saw my Instagram stories, you have not got to see the meat tree. That's this place. Well, coming out of here at last light. Feels good. And it's a beautiful evening to walk out, I'll tell you what. Most of the leaves have fallen, but there's still some aspen leaves that are yellow. And you got some brush up here, some oranges. Super pretty. Got the guys behind me uh, back there just a little ways, but I want to close this out. Say thank you guys for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. These elk hunting videos, they always seem to be some of your favorites from what I've read and seen on the comments and judging by views. Hope you guys enjoyed it. I'm headed to meet up with Casey and Brian after this and the whole Hush crew and the hunt winner who won our elk hunt giveaway. So we've got two more tags, actually three including Logan's. Three more elk hunts in New Mexico. And I want you guys to stick around for best season 4.0. It's been a fun ride so far and I'd say the season is not even over yet. So make sure you subscribe, check out our merch, gethushing.com, please support us guys. Uh, means a lot, so love you guys. We'll see you on the next hunt.